the coach here so welcome back and if you're new here my name is Kamina the coach I've been working and living abroad for over a decade um, you'll find many videos regarding that although the world has changed post COVID so may not always apply some good advice in there I'm also a transracial late discovery adoptee meaning I was adopted by people of a different race um, also I didn't know that I was adopted until I was 32 so you'll find some uh, videos on this channel uh, in regards to dealing with trauma uh, related to that and uh, trauma related to early childhood trauma as well definitely some early childhood trauma related to um, that episode to those things that happened when I was young as well and so you'll find some videos on here just about living a better more peaceful life um, so at the moment I am living in Mexico uh, living and working in Mexico and uh, hope, I hope that this will be my final stop and um, not just with Mexico but with all countries I approach them with a great deal of respect um, even or especially not not let's say even especially those countries that the United States treats with um, a, a, a huge lack of respect so places like Iraq um, I approach these countries with a great deal of respect regardless of how the United States approaches them so I try to avoid I try to avoid foreigners channels regarding Mexico. I saw that there is a black man talking about it. Ultimately, the vibe that I get from foreigners doing channels about Mexico are rich. These are rich people. They are gentrifying Mexico. Um, most of them are coming here with um, their rich American partners or or men coming here and marrying Mexican women who then, in my opinion, ultimately become like a slave. That's a strong statement to make, but I currently work with a teacher whose goal is to marry a Mexican woman. Like, we're not talking about like love and romance, like his goal is to marry a Mexican woman because he wants to be cooked and cleaned for and all that jazz. Anyways. So, uh, um, I've also matched with a couple of people online, brown and black people who are coming or are already in Mexico, uh, who don't know what digital nomads are or who don't know the, the status of Oaxaca. I met a, uh, a Mexican American chef who work, who uh, graduated from the culinary school I used to work at in Arizona and uh, he's got a channel and he thinks his channel is gonna blow up when he comes to Mexico so yet another gringo so to speak even though he's Mexican another gringo that wants to come to Oaxaca and get rich off of her spoils I'm not with it I'm not I'm not with it um, I uh, met somebody who's a barber and I'm like so you're a digital nomad he was like I'm a barber he was like I guess I'll work some I guess he's getting like a military retirement or something like that and he was like you know I intend to do that but he you know you can do that under the table so not paying any taxes not making a local salary I hope you can hear me with this window open the chance, odds are probably not. It's a little hot this morning. Though. Um, so yeah, I'm easily frustrated about that stuff. I've taken the time and I continue to take the time to learn about Mexico, her history, and her relationship, her uneasy relationship with the United States that for the moment has been severed and good for him. The president who is about to, who is on his way out, um, he, he, all the initials of his name are Emlo, so that's what they affectionately call him. And so uh, the United States is like, 
slapped Mexico on the hand for their desire to have judicial reform. What do they want to do? They want to elect their ju judges, their, like our federal, our Supreme Court. They want to fire all their judges, hire all their judges, put a cap on their salaries. They can't be making more than the um, president, makes sense, and uh, term with term limits. So yeah, makes sense to a common person, but America's got to stick their nose in and say, oh, this is a bad idea. We want to talk about pot. America, this is not your country. Mind your own business. But that is historically the way it has been for the United States and Mexico. And the more American involvement, the more Americans there are here, the more American companies there are here, the more the United States is likely to interfere with Mexican business. So, uh, so yeah, and I think that most Americans don't give a damn. They're only concerned about themselves and what can they take from a country that's always already stretched to her limits, right? So I definitely don't approach it from that perspective. I'm also not approaching it from the white cape perspective. I'm not here to save anybody for sure. But um, I'm also not here to take. I try to give as much as I take, hopefully. Um, so that's not what this video is about. I feel, I feel like I've talked about this before until I'm blue in the face. Also, by the way, I've also mentioned this before. In fact, I think I've done a whole video on it. I'm not an expatri expatriate. I'm a damn immigrant. Expatriate. Give me a break. So why aren't black and brown people called expatriates when they immigrate or migrate to a country to work? Because they're black and brown. And expatriate is some elitist term for people that come from industrialized, primarily white countries. And I'm not going to participate in that. Anyways. So, um, it's very interesting taking advice about how to move in Mexico from people who don't look like you. So this is a very interesting uh, kind of precarious situation. So I did talk to a Mexican guy, a Mexican American guy who's living here now, who is maybe two shades darker than me. His hair is a lot thicker than mine. It's about this a little shorter but it's thicker so when he wears it out he's got like a proper afro and his skin is dark and um, interestingly and quite frustratingly when we walk down the street together and we walk into stores together we're not doing anything we get a lot of looks um, of course I am tall he's tall which is unusual for Oaxaca um, there are tall people in Mexico but in general the indigenous are quite short so I'm tall, he's tall, but also, and I think predominantly, it was the color of his skin and his hair. And, you know, black is scary. Even though he's Mexican, um, I, I felt the prejudice. And the prejudice that I don't feel when I am alone, I don't. I have a friend now who is uh, from Oaxaca, and um, he's relatively short, um, quite a bit lighter than me. Um, he's unusual because he wears um, dreadlocks, but he doesn't get the kind of, even for his hair, he does get a little of attention, but not the same kind of venom that my other friend got um, observed with. So keep that in mind as I talk about this stuff. I move through the world with a different experience because of my complexion. I'm also not white, and, um, and so white is what people assume that Americans are. Interestingly enough, you know, the indigenous were the originals. Um, they killed most of them. But when people think American, they think white. When they think Canadian, they think white. When they think British, they think white. So when they think Australian, they think white. White, 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 white. So um, no one ever assumes that I'm from the United States when they see me especially here because I speak Spanish I think people just assume that I am 
Cuban or Dominican or from some other Spanish speaking country or possibly from Brazil. I never, I never want to lie to people because, especially in saying that I'm Brazilian, because maybe the person I'm talking to, well, because I don't lie for one, I do my best anyway. But number two, what if they start speaking to me in Portuguese? I definitely don't speak Portuguese, not any. So, anyways. Um, yeah, so majority of the people that I work with in my department, because it was only, they were only allowed to hire foreigners for a while for the department, for the, for the history. Um, my colleague is the first Mexican ever to be hired into a department, but let's not talk about all the racism inside of Mexico. It's not my business. Um, but yeah, so majority white people and a um, majority of them have been here for a really long time. And when they offer me advice or their perspective, they're offering me this perspective through the lens of a white person. Yeah, well, you know, I'm not white. And the truth is, is that in a mostly or a largely brown black state, I blend in way more and I am, even with my height, I blend in way more and I'm accepted way more. So I receive a different level of treatment. Whereas they might charge a white person 300 pesos, they might charge me 100. This car is trying to race. <laughs> so yes, it is a different, it is a very different, um, it's a very different way of being for a brown person versus a white person in Mexico. I mean, right or wrong, it is what it is. Um, also, people that I work with, um, you know, giving me dad reviews for talking with someone. Oh, this person is rude or mean or whatever. Well, maybe it has to do with the color of your skin or and, and, possibly and, not or, um, culture. So, uh, I don't know if I would have been the way that I am if I wouldn't have been from Texas. But te Texas is nicknamed the friendly state for a reason. Also, Texas up to Oklahoma was Mexico. Lots of Mexicans. So, it's very, very normal for me to say hello to everyone I pass, especially at the university where I work. I speak to anyone who makes eye contact with me, and that's cultural here. It's very normal. And I think that a large part, uh, so my, the color of my skin mixed with the fact that I respect the culture, I think that helps me to move through society differently than a white person who refuses to accept cultural norms. I had a person tell me, stop. I had a person tell me, oh, I feel like I should put blinders on you when we're walking because, I don't know, it makes them feel uncomfortable that I greet everybody when we're walking. But the result of me doing the things that I do and the result of me moving through this largely black and brown space as a brown person means that things are different for me. And that just is what it is. Um, there's nothing really t that I can do to change that. I mean, I suppose, and why would I want to change that? It's more comfortable for me. Um, why am I talking about this now? I have a coworker, uh, a new-ish coworker. We've been here rel relatively speaking about the same time. And she treats me, I think she's racist. She treats me um, better than she treats the Mexicans. And I think that that's messed up. Um, she's also quite hard on the students and feels like the students should be able to speak like Americans and Canadians. And um, which is also a, a, a colonial perspective. And as a result, 
people don't like her. Uh, oh, 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 also she's quite harsh in, her, in the way and explosive when she gets stressed and upset. I mean, moving to a new country is always going to be stressful and frustrating. But, I mean, the way with which she deals with it or doesn't deal with it has given her a bad name and nobody wants to help her. And, well, you know, it's finally one situation where my skin works out for me. Um, I will definitely admit to colorism in the United States where light skin has a, a benefit, but it has a, this complexion isn't necessarily light skin here. I'm just average here, which helps me fit in, which is nice. And um, adhering to culture, respecting to culture also helps me have a better, a better life here. Uh, for sure, I respected culture in Saudi Arabia, but covering actually didn't pay off there because people just assumed that I was African and they treated me very poorly. Versus here, where this is a largely brown state, I have a, a an advantage because I get treated better, but I also, again, respect customs and move more um, more respectfully through through society. So not really advice just really my take on the difference between how i move uh, warning you to be careful if you're watching a lot of white people and you're a black or a brown person um also being aware of the black people that you're watching their uh, financial levels the color of their skin it's going to be a different experience for everyone so just because i share an, my experience doesn't mean you're going to have the same experience so I'm going to go ahead and go in here to work. I've got lots of grading to do. Until next time, my name is Kamina the Coach, sending you love, light, peace, and joy. I haven't been able to do that in a while because I've been driving in my last videos. And yeah, until next time, I'm out. Peace.